Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we're gonna do a short review of a couple of Mission Models paints. These here are quite new for me and this is only my third attempt on working with them. I was in for quite a surprise and if you stay with me in the next few minutes I expect that you will be in for the same. Mission Models is a company that is based in USA and most importantly these paints are made in the US. Not many products that we seen lately are made anywhere else but China. That is important for a number of reasons. But we are not going to focus on that here, but on the fact that we have acrylic paints that work slightly different than the rest that we know and used to work with. I had some issues with acrylic fumes last couple of years, although many claim that they are harmless. There is no way of that being a truthful fact, but the fumes here irritate me less than the rest and I can vouch for that. Mission models do include a cardboard and a nice booklet in their package with the paints and thinners. A cardboard has short description with the basics for using Mission Models products. The leaflet features introduction and a nice folding color chart which shows an abundance of paints. The number is growing as we speak. Also, there are more thorough explanations how to use those paints and if you follow that you will be most likely successful while airbrushing. Mission Models are the only company that I've seen doing that. Now without too much of an intro to bore you with, let's take a look on how those paints work. Again, as for the Mission Models Primer review, I will be using Sparmax SP35C. This is a well-known and widely used airbrush with a rather big nozzle setup. This one is suitable for most of scale modeling applications and I use it for another reason too. Many modelers out there have one in their stash since Sparmax are affordable and very reliable. If I want to test something, I prefer not to use my most precise tools nor go in the other polarity. So, this is exactly something in between. Now, let's do some painting. We are using Kinetics 48 scale Hornet as a test bed, Prime with Mr. Surfacer 1200 spray can. Now, I have poured some thinner inside of the airbrush cup already. I experienced some trouble with the dropper of the bigger bottle, that's why it isn't filmed. I will use a plastic medicine dropper in the future to avoid that and I suggest you do too. Although it is recommended to mix everything in a separate cup, I will use the method that I work with when I'm in between layers of paint and in a hurry. That's usually the most stressful one and the one that leads to most mistakes. The ratio that Mission Models recommends gave me a slightly thinner than usual paint. As you can see the coverage isn't perfect and probably the humidity of the air was adding to that too. I work with slightly higher pressure usually too. Even with that mention everything sprays well enough on the surface and if you give it a little bit time it will settle correctly. To make paint thicker I added a bit more to the mixture, few drops. Now everything looks way better and it sprays pretty much like every other acrylic paint with salt difference that when you look at this one it looks more thick. With 0.35mm nozzle of the Sparmax that shouldn't be a problem though. The Michel Models paints looks wet when applied in this particular case which is the thumbnail for acrylic paints in general. Note that I do not use that method usually. I prefer higher pressure and almost dry paint over the surface upon impact. Mission Models paints have self-leveling features which helps here. Spraying in that manner helps too, especially to learn you to be patient and give the paints time to cure properly. The second layer that I am applying here is done with more air to help the paint on the surface to cure a bit faster. Also I am covering only where I see the need of it at some places that the first layer didn't cover it in full. Be sure to work your way slowly and carefully and to not cover the area 
where that isn't necessary. The paint will self-level as I said and it will look just fine in the end. Now let's try something new. Mission Models offers an additive which is an add-on and not a mandatory one. I will add this for the test of the other wing of the Hornet. Following Mission Models guidelines for ratio of the mixture, this should settle in a different manner when cured. It sprays the same way actually, I haven't noted any difference. Wet appearance on the surface is the same as before and as I've said the rule for acrylics is exactly that. Your surface should appear wet in the beginning and with time everything settles and equalizes the final look and appearance. For some it might look scary but just give it 30 minutes or so and you will see that everything will be quite ok. I am covering everything a bit randomly here. This is not my usual way of painting except for the cases when I do a single tone camo scheme and I have done some pre-shading before that. Also I usually work a bit slower than that. Before adding a second layer I give some time for the wet appearance to slightly fade and then I continue. Even though it now looks thicker than needed, in a while it will settle and the results will be quite pleasing. Usually different colors require different amount of thinner to work in their best possible way. Here we are spraying a little bit of green. I know it isn't typical for a hornet but it gives a contrast and basic idea on how paints work for mission models. At this point I began to understand that with that particular day of the test I will have little to no need of a thinner. Mission models paints work best when they are thin. Surprisingly not in my case. The green settles over the grey quite easily. The lighter the paint the harder the process is usually. Actually I see only small difference which I can blade the thinner for too. Maybe the fact that my pressure is a notch higher will add to that. This is among my first attempts so forgive me if I'm doing something wrong and I am forgetting to mention it. For some of you it is probably a fun to watch especially if you are more experienced with mission models paints. I am still not, but learning and everything happens way too quickly. Now where the colors are blended with the angle of my spring there is no technical option for a sharp line in between them, but that wasn't what I was going for. I am just adding an odd camouflage to the Hornet and over it we'll do some more tests. One thing that you probably saw is the overspray behind the vertical stabilizer. However, in my defense I should say that this is only for testing purposes and it happens. Be sure to put something behind a surfaces that are overlapping one another to avoid that to happen to you. Here I will be using the good old crown cap which helps for spraying what I am about to spray. And these are some fine lines. Which basically is a nightmare if you haven't been tested and used to the paint specifics and character. And yes each type and brand of paint has a character which you need to get to know in order to control. First thing that I felt is that I still need a bit more pressure to fit my style of painting. You will probably see that while watching me working here. I felt that the paint is too liquid too. Still for my surprise. That allows for greater flexibility when you work with fine lines and freehand camouflages. Also for the first time since I tested Mission Models paints I got a little bit of a dry tip trouble on my needle. Now this would have happened long before if that was Vallejo or AK Interactive. They are very unpleasant in that particular manner, not with mission models. 
The Sparmax brush dipped in the thinner will solve the problem in a matter of seconds. You should try this with AK paints and let me know how it will work for you. In general, fine lines, filling spaces and slowly layering paint is absolutely troubleless. All you need is your focus and to take your time. Due to the fact I was being filmed, I lost partially those two vital features. I bet you can see that here. Nevertheless, the results that was revealed to me after about 12 hours of curing time were great. Lines of this kind are hard to be done on plastic. While testing on paper is easy and always, but the absorbing qualities here on the plastic are quite different and I should give my praise to Mission Models for the paints that they managed to make and the specific qualities that they gave them. Now let's try some dark grey. This is an RLM color, very touching subject. Also, being an RLM color, this implies freehand camouflage over planes with all kinds of scary patterns and challenges for the modeler. Actually, same goes for World War II armor colors, especially German. Here I am doing simple tryouts, which are easy since they don't follow a specific patterns or logic. While working in a real environment, let's say you're preparing for an IPMS Nationals, you will deal with a lot more pressure and under bigger stress. But as you can see, that shouldn't be a problem. Just the contrary. Mission Models Paints allows these lines to happen very easily and with the Mia Paints, for example, I had to prep a single paint for an hour before spraying to achieve the same fine lines and results. I can assure you that with that nozzle size of 0.35 and these results, this will guarantee that if you use 0.2 for example, the sky will be the limit. Another thing that is worth mentioning is the contrast that you get from the paints from the very first run. In a bit you will see me spraying the middle of the right wing with dark grey and how that will look against other paints. All of the rest in the video are just me playing with the paints and some random patterns that I like to try. Straight over the primer inclusive. In terms of pressure and temperature, I have a couple of hints for you. I discussed temperature with Michael Rinaldi personally, and I know that you're familiar with the name. He told me that he sprays at slightly lower temps than me, but I would suggest to go for painting below 24-25 degrees Celsius. Also, I experienced quite different results when comparing my spray session to my other home which is far away from the sea and in relatively low humidity area. It depends where you are and how warm it is, how humid and so on. Be aware of that and test, test and test again before you go on your latest model. This is the only certain method that will spare you any trouble. Practice makes perfect. There are some signals visible here that my paint was thinner than needed, or my pressure too low, or my nozzle too white. But overall, the results according to my perception of airbrushing are more than satisfactory. With a little bit of effort, every camo scheme should be a breeze and as you can see, the contrast between paint colors is vivid and pleasant for the eye. No unpleasant surprises, no accidents. All you need to do is decide for yourself, do you need to add the poly and get the eggshell or you want to use the classic paint and thinner. Otherwise, everything seems to be working quite nicely and remember, this is one of my very first attempts with mission models. If I do test more, I believe that within a couple of days I will be able to master them and achieve even greater results.
Now you're looking at the wing that cured for 30 minutes painted with paint and thinner. The next one is paint, thinner and poly. Poly is not mandatory as I've said and I'm not sure was I able to catch the shine here but it looks just like an easter egg freshly painted, exactly as described by mission models in their instructions. An actual coverage. Both are very strong and with surprisingly nice finishes even though they are not 100% covered. Actually, with pre-shading style of painting, this isn't needed. So, you just witnessed one of my very first attempt with Mission Models paints. The results speak for themselves. Basically, the temperature was against me, the humidity too. The workspace that I used is too not my typical one. However, they do work just fine showing qualities that you cannot find with any other brands. For example, the fine lines that you saw me spraying are doable on paper sheet easily but not on plastic. The fact that the paints were easily sprayed out of the bottle in that temperature and humidity was also encouraging. With that specifically, humidity is a big plus, especially if you spray like me nearby the sea. What deserves attention is the durability of the painted model. Within 12 hours, after painting, everything was rock solid and with beautiful shine. The edges of the paint especially, where we painted German grey compared with the rest is surprisingly good looking. As far as I know, RLM colors from Mission Models are very accurate in general. So, in conclusion, these paints are very well working ones with superb qualities. The only letdown was the fact that I was having troubles pouring the thinner with its own dropper and I was spilling it all the time. I have no idea why everything else worked ok, maybe it was me in that particular case. Otherwise everything else was beautiful and I can only highly recommend those paints. I hope that video was useful for you too. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed. Subscribe if you did, comment down below and go out, get some Mission Models paints and test them out. In the meantime, stay tuned for more and I will see you in the next one.